Hello and welcome to another video by Haste Computer Repair. And today we're taking a look at the Lenovo Think Center M920Q Tiny PC for use in 2024 and onward. This PC really does live up to its tiny name. At 7 inches long, 7 inches tall, and 1 and a 3 eighths inches thick. Don't be fooled by its tiny size, this thing actually packs a lot of modularity and some really interesting upgrade features. So in this video we'll be talking about the hardware, taking a look inside, doing some video render tests and some video encoding tests, and some gaming tests. And here's the basic hardware specs. Taking a look at the front I.O., there's the power button, microphone and headphone jacks, 1x USB Type-C 3.1, and 1x USB 3.1 always on. For vanity features, we have the characteristic red and black look that Lenovo has come to be known for in their Think Center and ThinkPad lines. There's a honeycomb style grill for air intake, especially down here by the Think Center logo. That's the main area where air will be sucked in by the CPU fan. And on the side, there's some holes offering some passive cooling, a bit on this side as well. Onto the rear I.O., there's the air exhaust grill, power input for the 65 watt power adapter. One thing I like about this power adapter is if you have a matching one for your ThinkPad, well, you can still use it for the ThinkCenter. For display options, there's one display port native to the motherboard as well as one HDMI port. Over here, there's the modular port, which happens to be display port in this case. 2x USB 3.1 Gen 1 and 2x USB 3.1 Gen 2. Also, there's a RJ45 Ethernet port. And you can also see there's a punch out for an extra display or perhaps a serial port. Well, according to the product specifications, it is indeed a punch out for a serial port. And it looks like you can get a VGA port there as well. I'm sure you can also install a HDMI port too. And last but not least, here's the slot for the Kensington lock. Well, I suppose that's not the last feature. There's also a punch out right here for a Wi-Fi antenna. This did not ship with a Wi-Fi card installed, but we'll open this up shortly and take a look inside and we'll at least see where the card can go. So to get inside this thing, there's just one screw on the back to take out and you'll need a Phillips head screwdriver. Now that we have that screw taken out, we can get inside this thing and you want to slide the top portion of the case this way. I've already taken this thing apart and installed all the upgrades for a separate video. What I'll do now is take everything out and show you what's going on. So I decided to put this thing on top of a white box so we have better contrast. Let's start by taking the 2.5 inch hard drive out. Be careful, there's a ribbon cable for the SATA connector leading to the motherboard. And here's the port for the M.2 Wi-Fi card. Usually the antenna would wind its way through here and out the back. And because that's not installed, I went ahead and purchased a TP-Link Bluetooth 4.0 and a TP-Link AC1300 Wi-Fi adapter. So this is something that you can do in lieu of purchasing a M.2 card. Right beside that M.2 port is a PCIe lane. One really cool thing somebody did was install a graphics card inside, in particular an RX 6400. With the quick removal of a couple screws, you can install a different display port right here. Here's the Intel Q370 chipset. Just in case it ever needs to be done, here's the clear CMOS pins, where you would move this back and forth on the pins while turning on and off the system in order to clear CMOS and maybe get rid of a password or something like that. If anyone in the comments can help describe these three ports, I would be much appreciated because I'm a little too busy to look them up right now and I would like to know. I guess I'm not really that technical. To access the RAM and SSD ports, we can remove the bottom panel by going this way. So here we currently have 16 gigabytes of Samsung DDR4 2666 megahertz RAM running in dual channel in these two DIMM slots. Over here is the one NVMe M.2 slot. And I currently have a 512 gigabyte Western Digital PC SN720 NVMe solid state drive with PCIe 3.0 times four speeds. And removal is quite easy. You just lift up this blue tab. 
and you can easily install a new one. So you can see here there's printing for a second M.2 SSD to be installed, but unfortunately on this particular version that I have, we don't have the actual port soldered on. It would be really cool to have that added expansion though. Now let's take a look at where the CPU is hiding. Of course, it's right underneath the CPU fan. And to access it, there's a little latch here that you can push in and then you can pull up the whole assembly. But you'll notice that you're encumbered by a couple of cable connections to the motherboard. In particular, the CPU fan and the speaker connection. Now it should easily come out. By the way, I can kind of appreciate how my big hand can cover this whole PC. I feel like a giant. So I've already blown out the dust and cleaned the CPU fan. As you can see, it's pretty easy access if you need to do that too. Underneath this little black plastic here is the CMOS battery. And of course, here's the CPU heatsink. Now I was getting too lazy to take this heatsink off and show you the CPU and how to service it, but I'm gonna do it for science. See here, there's three screws to take out. Again, you'll need that Phillips head screwdriver. Here's that i5-8500T CPU in all its six core, six thread, low power consumption glory. Too much thermal paste or just enough? You be the judge. This 80 gigabyte hard drive is really just kind of for show. It'd be way cooler to install a one terabyte SSD. Now I'd like to take a moment to admire the compact beauty of this PC. Oh, the possibilities, oh, the wonders. The M920Q is hooked up to my LG 1440p monitor and we're getting ready to test some video rendering, video encoding and gaming. I currently have an HDMI cable connected to the back of the PC and that is connected to a capture card in my workstation PC down here and we'll be recording over here. So I'm expecting some pretty modest gaming performance. Let's cut to some footage. I have my usual 11 minutes of 1080p raw footage loaded up. Let's see how long it takes to render. CPU is at 100% usage and we're definitely accessing some of those boost clock speeds. RAM at 6.6 .6 or 6.7 gig gigabytes. And the GPU is at about 63, 57, 48% usage. That's actually kind of surprising. It rendered in four minutes and 47 seconds. That's a little bit faster than I expected. And here's the result. 
Well, now I'm going to test some video encoding in Handbrake. This is 11 minutes and 49 seconds of 1080p footage. Now this is relative to the type of work I do for my own YouTube channel. Because I do it so often, this is a pretty good round of tests. So let's see how long this encoding takes. And I chose Creator 1080p 60 frames per second. Again, we're ramping up to 100% CPU utilization. The video encoding took about 7 minutes to complete. And that's about what I expected. So productivity wise, you know, it's not terrible. I could definitely work with it if I really needed to. I had a pretty good time testing out the M920Q. I think this little PC has a lot to offer. I could definitely see using it for a variety of different purposes, for work, maybe some light gaming, or maybe something like a NAS or Plex server. I think it'd be really good for that. And it's small, it doesn't take up a lot of space. Since this PC has a lower power output, using it as a little server would be a pretty good idea. So hopefully this video helped you out to decide if this is something that works for you in 2024. If you're using something like this, let me know in the comments below and share your experience. Otherwise, thanks a lot for watching and have a great day.